these Conan sagas, right? So these are reprints, right? And then, so I'm going to ask a very important question here. Okay. Right. So first of all, what's cool about these is like this one reprints Conan number one, two, and three, right? So my first question is, do I own Conan one, two, and three? <laughs> right. Or do, I have, do I have to have it proper? But if I want to read the story, right? Oh. It's so and it's all black and white. Excellent. So that's the first cool thing about this. Yeah. And of course, Gary Windsor Smith was the artist on those first Conans, right? So he came back. I think this was in '88. These are uh, new covers. So this is a this is new. Well, new then. Barry Windsor Smith art. Wow. So, yeah. So that's number one. And the first nine issues all featured uh, new Barry Windsor Smith art, right? And I'm missing a couple of these. So anybody want to trade? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, thanks for all the comments on when I was doing the thing there. That's beautiful. We're going to yeah. jump ahead to the Conan. Conan. So, all right. So we got number two. And this one's going to uh, reprint number four, five, and six. But yeah, that one's a little, that one, that one's, uh, you got to kind of. Wow. No, it's put your cool. peepers on it. Put your peepers who, on it. Who did that, that was like a, what Barry Windsor Smith. The, oh, who published this? Yeah. Or yeah, Marvel. Was, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, on the inside, you're getting all Marvel reprints from those first Conan issues. Excellent. So, do I go here? Right. Yeah. So, you're going to get that one. So, that's number two. And, like I said, that issue, that's uh, number four, five, and six. Okay. I'm hearing good things about Titan doing Conan for sure. Oh, um, man. I, okay. So, every time I go to my comic shop, they're out. <laughs> no matter when I go, oh, we're sold out. So I think one guy is getting them all. Then I said, oh, I'm going to get <laughs> the Savage Sword. I get there for the Savage Sword. Oh, we're sold out. I'm like, come on, man. So I've been Actually, reading it online. Someone, it, filthy 50 centers. I told you guys that. I showed you guys that, right? Thanks, Will, for saying that. All right. Here's number three. And uh, there's your. And this one reprints number uh, no, 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 seven, three. Uh, yeah. Seven, eight, and nine. Excellent. You know. And like I said, um, so are these placeholders for. The, you know, because I'm I'm working on the run. I'm working on That's the Conan run. That's yeah. what I do, brother, buddy. I put I put them in bags and board, but I put the original numbering on the bag, and I yeah. put them in with it with it. What up, Kenneth Bird is back. Hi to everyone is here tonight. Everybody, yeah. all right. So let me get to. Thank you. Yeah, so you know, I, man, the the chances of me getting number one. Uh, that thing's got to be dog beat up before some, <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know, but uh, these are my placeholders. So here's number four of Conan Saga. Okay, these, cool. These are all Barry Windsor Smith. So I think he was uh, maybe experimenting with like, I don't know, some of these look like they're mosaic and then this is probably a pencil and then some look like they're painted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so this is uh, collecting issues 10 and 11. Then it's got a cool poem in the back. All right, mm. couple more, man. Couple more, oh, couple keep more. Going. Keep going, bro. You're you're on a streak tonight. <laughs> Here we go. There's number five, and this one's 12, 13, 14. Yeah, look at that. Wow. And then after this, you're gonna start seeing Conan Saga do uh, reprints from the comics, but also from Savage Sword of Conan. Which is, you know, where again my crazy uncles, right? Yeah. They, hey, put that Bugs Bunny down. Put the <laughs> yeah. Come check out some of this. Like, okay, oh shoot, yeah, Grandma. Are, are those comic size or magazine size? Oh, these are magazine. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, these are magazine size. Nice. So they're the same size as a Savage Sword, but again, it's all reprinting in black and white. Nice. Those early Conan magazine, or excuse me, Conan okay. comics. Yeah, so you get your love your it, Barry. but man, I mean Barry Windsor is awesome, but John Buscema is always going to be my kid. Name. I would see the Conan mags and the and the comics everywhere, and I just never grabbed them, like because I was a uh, kid, you know. 
Yeah, now, yeah. No. Now we're all trying to get them, right? It's funny. Yeah. Well, in some shops, they wouldn't even let you look at them. Now nah, you go. No, nah, no, nah, you can't come back here. Like, well, what's back there? You drive your interest even more. All right, here's number seven. So what y'all hiding back there? 2021. So yeah, so I'm missing uh, what did I say four and number nine. I'm missing the last one of these uh, new Barry Windsor Smith covers. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, but like I said, you know, they're gonna later on reprint Savage Sword of Conan. Love it. Pick up a few storylines and keep you hooked. Like that. so. Yeah. There you go, man. Very cool. Wow. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for sharing those, dude. We went from Doctor Strange to Conan with you, man. Barry Windsor Smith. I love it. Working on the top five of all time characters that I, I got to. What are your top five? Now? Let's hear them. All right. So Spectre, Conan, Doctor Strange. And then there's room for two more. Uh, I'm still debating. I'm still debating. Because okay. always the, the, the horror comics and the, the Western and war, those yeah. are just universal. But I got to start. You know, yeah, yeah, I hear you, bro. Yeah, I mean, next week it'll be somebody different. No, I'm playing. Those, These are my top yeah, three for a reason. Weird, those weird wars will always be floating around your collection, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, back there, man. That's next week. <laughs> so, hey, Will, are you ready for us? Would you like to share? Are yeah. you got the new stuff? We're, we're I got the new stuff. Okay, you got the goods, man. All right, Will. Yeah, Thank right. you, Mike. Welcome. Hello, yeah. Will. Hey, so I just got uh, we love your reviews, man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I just literally got back from the LTS. So. Oh, cool. Out of the presses. Here we go. We'll pull these out. Yeah. Show he, you what I got. Comic and, and Brace could say you can only handle so much goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and I can relate to that, too. That's funny. I love it, man. <laughs> All right. So we got the new ASM, ASM 47. You got Chasm on the cover. Oh. Um, and Hollow's Eve. Yeah, they're both uh, relatively new characters. Relatively new, right? Uh, this is a JRJR and Scott Hanna cover. So working together on that cover, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah. Is that the cover A? This is the cover A. And you got guest artists on the inside, Todd Nock. He does a lot of the. Uh, oh, yeah. He, he did a lot covers. of the 90s. Yeah, so. Not looking bad. Not looking bad on the interiors. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a, a big uh I remember him from So the, is this totally different from the ultimate Spider Man that I hear a lot about where it's is it a different altogether or how does that it work? Is. It is all uh different altogether. Um, Jacob. Thanks for being here. It's a different uh whole instead of the six one six, it's a whole different universe that they're in. Mm. But um but this is uh this is actually Ultimate Spider-Man number one, which I picked up today. This oh, is the fourth, the fourth, fourth printing. printing. Love okay. that story, man. Awesome. Yeah. That's the one everybody's raving about, right? Yeah, yeah. this one is good. It's good. It has Jonathan Hickman. Yeah, it's it's giving you the 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 life that I think Peter people wanted for Peter Parker. So. And Chichetto on the art, I think. Too. And Chichetto is the artist. Yeah, and he was great on Daredevil too. Yeah, he, he Chip Starsky was games. great. So when I saw that combination, I was like, yep, picking up. I ordered the uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Let's see if we go to the uh, – let's see if we can find a page. So here's a page with the uh, the Ultimate Universe Iron Man in there. Oh, Ooh. yeah. I won't ruin the story in case there's people oh, out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's still, it. it's still very new, this universe. Yeah. Ultimate Green Goblins in this – this first issue, it's more of a cameo. It's a one page, yeah, one pager. And believe it or not, uh, Ben Ben Parker's still alive and working with J. Jonah Jameson. Yes, that's wow. the twist. Yeah, yeah, that's one of my favorite parts of the series. Yeah, that Ben so is alive. It's a lot of good stuff happening in this book. You know, they're not they're not you know it's not shoehorn Parker every. <laughs> So far, he's had a relatively good. The pacing's great. The pacing's um, good. Not the so villains much. are funny. Yeah, <laughs> so, there's some funny moments, like huh. uh, when he meets uh, Shocker. Yeah, that was funny. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need shocker and I won't ruin it, but it's no. it's definitely worth checking out whether you uh check it out online or and he's um, in his 30s and he just received his powers. So that's a, right. a, a, another dynamic. He's you know, and he's got a family. Too. He's married okay. to MJ. Yeah, he felt he empty him. before he, he received the powers again. Yeah, so uh -huh. it's definitely like a, a life that I think people wanted for Peter. <laughs> All right. Uh, keeping with Spider Man, we have you know oh, this sixty year anniversary of of the Avengers. So this is actually uh, Spider Man ASM forty seven still, but they did a this West Coast thing. Avengers What If? Yeah. Yep. Cover. Mm -hmm. So they've been doing these for a while, about a year. Disney covers, right? Disney covers. Yeah. First, it like those covers. I just it makes me mad because they put them all on Amazing Spider Man, which made no sense to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> they just covers from all yeah all over the place. I think for them, you know, business wise, it made sense, right? And that's their their top Probably. selling. Yeah, that's I'm sure that's where so, the decision came from. All right. So Disney was like, Yeah, put it on ASM. It sells. <laughs> Even when it sucks, it sells. So uh we got a your man indie house of slaughter number twenty two. Oh, they're still doing those. Huh? I jumped yeah. out the first few, but is it is it good now? It's good. It's real good now. It, they actually got back to Jace Butcher, who was kind of one of the characters in the first yeah. first book. But um, basically, everybody who's done him wrong in his life has come to New Orleans to basically finish him off. And he gets uh, another friend who uh, helps him out with stuff. Basically, like a, a fortune teller who says, you know, everybody's here. They're yeah. coming for you. You, you got to run. You got to get out of town. And he's like, yeah. wait. You're telling me everybody who's like hurt me in my life is here at the yeah. same time in the same place. And he's yeah. like, we're staying here and we're getting revenge. So, cool. you know, yeah. And this is part two. So part one already happened. And that's kind of where he finds out that everybody's hanging out. Yeah, That's cool. Um, I have something is killing the children. The first one all the way to like maybe 30 something. And I kind of jumped off, but Maybe I should grab some trades and catch up with the story and, and read that stuff too. It, it's getting good again, or it's pretty or good. Yeah, it's slowing good. down there for me, you know. Yeah, it was. It, it definitely hit. So I believe the original um, something is killing the children was only twelve or fifteen issues. Like they didn't have much more written past that, and oh, it I just see. it got so popular that they were like, "You can't stop writing." <laughs> <laughs> So then he had to come up with like origin stories and new characters and, you know, and I think that's where the, it lost a little bit of the momentum. He was trying to build the world, you know, past yeah. what he already had. So, but I really think that, uh, yeah, Rob and Mike would like those earlier issues of something is killing the children. It's, it's definitely horror and it's, it's borderline gore, but it's not, it's more suspense. <laughs> you know, it's, it's cool. It's not, you know, it's not over the top. And, and speaking of gore and suspense and horror, we have the Incredible Hulk, which is you know Marvel's horror book these days. Really? Yeah, it's it's really there's monsters in here. Let's see, I can I can find you some. Um, it's all it really is now just about Hulk fighting demons. Um, oh, they're after him. If I were to jump in on that, what issue do I jump to? Where do I start on that storyline? I mean, it's it's on issue eleven, so I would just probably start with one and just get the trade. Um, if not, and the art from Nick um, Klein is awesome in the beginning. Yeah, Nick Klein kills it. Um, if not, you can jump around issue six, and that progresses the story past where um, you know where it it's understandable. So there's the first arc where he's fighting um, demons and stuff, but you know you got. Oh, no, now, this isn't it. this is not Nick Klein, right? This is not. No, this is a guest artist. Uh Earls. Uh let's see if I can Yeah, find the major it. complaint is that Nick Klein, um, yeah, this is Jacob. I wish Nick Klein did the whole thing. That's what I'm hearing. Danny Earls, uh guest artist. So yeah, um, I guess Nick Klein just needs a break every once in a while. So he yeah. goes off and jumps on. Um, for the most part, though, he does the covers. So that is a Nick Klein cover. Cool. Hold That's pretty. Hold that baby up. <laughs> So here's here's Hulk, you know, choking out some demon. You can yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. But yeah, basically they're after Hulk. Like uh like Aaron was saying, they're they're you know, they're chasing him down because they 
you know, who doesn't want a, a Hulk demon on their side, right? So they capture yeah. the Hulk and then just turn him into a big demon. And <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You could take over the world. So, yeah, shifted from the body horror of the Immortal Hulk series into, into just dark, you know, demon stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, and in between, right, you had the Donny Cates spaceship Hulk. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, which, which was exciting in the beginning, and people started falling off it, though. Right. right and then it, it kind of petered out. Yeah. Um, keeping it in, I guess, the, the horror range, this isn't really horror, but this is uh, Rat City number one. This spawn. is a brand, brand new spawn book. Yeah. Okay. But this, happen this happens in the future. Hold that right up. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so. That cover looks cool. Yeah, it's it's got very much like the 2099 vibe when Marvel was doing those characters. Just, uh, but um, Bobby Catalano says hi to you, Will. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bobby, <laughs> what is up? What is up? How are you doing? Uh, yeah, so we got Rat City. Awesome. Uh, they they already have like with this the thing with the Spawn books is they already like usually have the cover, right? No, ready at fifth. The spawn book out now ongoing yeah. right yeah and this happens in the future so there's some stuff that spawn does in the you know in the current that then propels this to the future what you have here is a wounded soldier who's got uh prosthetic legs but they're like cybernetic legs oh, okay. and and somehow whatever spawn did you know during his time kind of sends the powers <laughs> if you will the hell spawn powers to his legs and then that's kind of the catalyst for this guy to become come on hell spawn and they, they show you like some of the concept art back here so it's not the original spawn guy um no this is an al simmons al simmons yeah yeah this is a new spawn and have you read sam and twitch jacob hurts it's pretty good i did read it it was uh, it was interesting it, you know it's a lot of setup um yeah. to me but it, it definitely Seemed like an interesting book. Um, some some weird detective stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I I expected a little bit more like supernatural and let's investigate the alleyways and you yeah. know what's happening with Spawn and you know everything else that's happening in the the universe right now. And it was, uh, I, I mean, it was it was definitely like uh, more just cop detective story. And then at the end, you kind of get that whole. Uh oh, something's happening that's not quite well, spawn you know, 350 normal. Just, spawn 350 just dropped, right? And a major occurrence happened, right? And should we spoil it here? No? <laughs> or is it too new? You know what? If people were going to say, where should I start with Spawn? I would say start with 350 because it basically was a reset of um, of the Spawn books. Not not a hard reset, but it was it was – I think it was kind of like, how do we get people to jump onto Spawn from here? They had a, a story that this story basically, um, I would say even before 300, so maybe like issues like 290 or something like that. So you have like 60 issues of a storyline that just happened. Right. And how do you reconcile that, which they did in 350? And then how do you get people to jump on to see where it goes from there? Yeah. And that's basically what 350 was, was kind of like the, uh, all right, let's, let's see if we can get some new audience members to join us on this ride. Yeah. There's Scorch, mm -hmm. there's Gunslinger, there's Spawn and King Spawn, King Spawn. And now this one. And now, yeah. Yeah. Now there's Pretty Rats. Cool. Oh yeah. Which kind of ties into what was happening in Spawn anyway, because Spawn was bringing characters from the past, the present. He was bringing all sorts. Like this is how Gunslinger Spawn ends up in the, in the current. You know, yeah. it's, it's just pulling spawns in and out. So this, I guess, shows you the the consequences of his actions. Well, we'll see. I haven't read Rat City yet, so I'm Where not sure if there's any true consequences or bad consequences. Uh, here we have Weapon X-Men number two. Okay, how is this? How was the first one of that? I got mixed reviews uh, on that. It was, it was fun. It, it was, was good. Fun. It's, okay. This, there's a ragtag team of of Wolverines joining together. If you're a fan of Onslaught, <laughs> Onslaught's in there. But if you're just a fan of seeing like different Wolverines, you know, uh, like here we have a Wolverine 
who's kind of lost his healing ability. Like he hasn't completely lost it, but it's slowed down. So his metabolism is slowed down. So oh, right, right. Yeah. He's a little, little, there's little, some humor. There is some humor. Yeah. There's definitely some humor. You have. Uh, so the salmon switch going back to that, was that just a one shot? No, it's, it's an ongoing. Well, that's an ongoing too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we got six, six in that universe. Right. Hey, Canadian survivalist. What's up? Greetings, Canadians, uh, Canadian survivalist. Right on. Yeah. So um, you do have. Thank you for being here. So you have a couple of other X-Men characters in here. You have Phoenix or so Jean Grey as the Phoenix. Um, kind of putting together this team. You have Zombie Wolverine. You have uh, Cameras Reverse, Age of Apocalypse Wolverine. Mm -hmm. um, you got a female Wolverine from like the 15th century. So cool. She's part of the bloodline of the Wolverines, if you will. She's a howl. It's interesting. The premise is that the Jean Grey from the a different universe gathers all these Wolverines that we know about and some new ones, right? Right. Yeah. And you know, puts them together as a team to to kind of fight stuff that's happening, primarily this guy, Onslaught. Who's the premise is Onslaught's kind of jumping between uh, different dimensions or different um, universes to kind of mind control, take over those places. Sure. And Jean Grey or the Phoenix and these Wolverines are kind of tracking them down. Cool. Right? Who's a better tracker than Wolverine? So. Right. <laughs> I got to step away for a second, Will. You, you're going to uh, hold it for a minute or so? Or... Yeah. Okay, I'll be right back. Mark Where, what, what was that? Uh, he's he's gonna be right back, man. Oh, he's gonna be right back. All right. So, mm -hmm. I what thought he was gonna mean? switch to somebody else. I didn't realize. <laughs> you know, it's all you, away. buddy. <laughs> what, what else is what else is going on new at the comic shop, man? What you got? All right. So we got uh, Ultimate X Men number two. This is the uh, first appearance of a new character, Maystorm. Hey, Dagger, how's it going? Marcus is in the house. Um. Peach Momoko. This is totally Peach Momoko driven. So if you know uh, Peach Momoko, this book is written and drawn by Peach Momoko, Japanese artist. So the style is very much like uh, chibi and, you know, different colors, closer to pastels, I guess. Um, just, you know, really close to, I guess, manga art. But Peach Momoko has been a pretty big artist lately. I mean, she even did uh, alternate, you know, variant costumes for the uh, Spider-Man 2 video game. So her artwork even crossed over multimedia into, into the Spider-Man video game. But this is, uh, yeah, Ultimate X-Men. So you got um, Armor is actually the main character so far in this book. And it looks like there's some stuff happening and... Eventually, I, I'm guessing out of this, there'll be a team um, that's going to happen. So you have uh, Maystorm, who's another character whose first appearance is in here. And I'm guessing as the series progresses, we'll have more and more right. characters added to the team. Cool. All right. Uh, next up, we have Star Wars The High Republic number six. So... This is okay. High Republic. Wow, here we go. Yeah, this is a prequel, so they actually give you the timeline here. So, the High Republic is now the first things that happen in the Star Wars universe, followed by right. Fall, of, Fall of the Jedi, which includes the Phantom Menace and you know, everybody's favorite, you know, trilogy. The first three, uh, <laughs> then you have Reign of the Empire, which are a lot of the um Disney shows and in between stuff. And movies. So you got the Bad Batch, you got Solo, a Star Wars story, and Obi Wan Kenobi. Then you got Age of the Rebellion, and that includes some of the some of the the Star Wars, some of the Disney stuff. Sorry. And then you got Rogue One in there, New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back. So you got the original trilogy in that in that. Cool. You know, and then cool. then the New Republic, which includes The Mandalorian and Ahsoka, and then Rise of the First Order, which is a, a lot of those new movies like The Force Awakens and you know The Rise I'm of Skywalker. Waiting for the Marvel timeline to get beyond the Return before the Return of the Jedi, right? That's what's happening right now. So. That's yeah, this is that's what's happening here. So in this book, this character here, 
Um, this this is on the third volume, Star Wars: The High Republic. So you start off with the introduction volume, which was the first one. Then we're put into a different uh, place with different characters yeah. for the second volume of Star Wars: The High Republic. Yeah. And this one, we have a major incident that happens. Um, the Starlight Beacon, which is kind of like the space station where all the Jedi patrol the outer rim, uh, ends up getting blown up, whatever. A lot of Jedi die. Um, but we get returned back to the volume one characters. But now with issue six, they're bringing in some characters from basically like 20 years prior who were in volume two. So now we're getting all the characters who have been popping up in these books on, in the same book. Awesome. In the same. So we're we're getting questions in the chat. What's going on here? It's called a simultaneous stream, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> right. Very, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, we're just uh sharing it's, our covers, right? What, so now Star Wars, is there a particular mm -hmm. title that you like nowadays, Will? I, I honestly I'm a big fan of the the High Republic stuff. Um you don't have to be a hardcore Star Wars fan to get into the High Republic because there's a whole new set of characters. Right. And it's basically, it's building the Star Wars universe. These are things that happened before Star Wars was Star Wars, right? So right. You're, you're learning all new things with this book. So whether you're an avid Star Wars reader or you're just somebody picking up a new book, Star yeah. Wars The High Republic is kind of a jumping on point for all people because you're just getting all new content. Yeah, mm -hmm. and characters and all, and the writing sometimes was a little spotty for me, so I got out. I got out of all Star Wars, but sometimes right. I'm intrigued. I had all of Doctor Afra until I jumped out. I think it was last year I jumped out. So, how right. is Doctor Afra? How would you uh, grade her right now? Her her title. Doc, well, Doctor Afra's on a hiatus right now. So, oh, it is okay. Yeah, it had, I don't think they've had a new issue in two or three months. Um, but it was for me. It was actually a pretty good, pretty good read. It was a good read. Excellent art. Yeah. Um, really good story surrounding Doctor Afra, and they always brought in like you know characters that were we were already familiar with. So like Luke Skywalker would show up, you know, and some of the other droids we're familiar with would show up, and um, uh, Black Chrysanthemum, and you know, just all different uh, characters who we're familiar with, whether it's through the Disney show or through you know the the star wars films um yeah i uh, i guess star wars dr afro went on hiatus i'm not sure why but they left some stuff open ended right. at the end of it so i figure at some point it's probably going to pick up maybe uh Alyssa wong who's writing it just had other obligations and had to go do an okay. Indian book or something so um they left it open uh cliff who's hanging around might know cliff knows a lot of stuff uh, yeah. <laughs> Alicia, um, yeah lisa wong I, I i actually liked her dr afra it didn't it was actually good it still kind of had a bubble gum to it but it wasn't it, it moved along you know? it moved along and it wasn't too jokey as well yeah. like there were some serious moments but it was overall kind of a light tone just considering mm -hmm. that that's kind of the personality of dr afra cool uh, the problem with the, the Star Wars, not a problem, but there are a lot of Star Wars books. So some of yeah. them are going to be high quality and some of them are going to be meh. Um, for the most part, the ones that are high quality are obviously like uh, Darth Vader. Right. Like Darth Vader book is very, very well written. And yeah. I think they had a lot of investment in Dr. Afra, right? So that seems yeah. like a character they were pushing. So in wrestling, yeah. we're going to put <laughs> those characters in the best situation. I think with Dr. Afra, you know. Yeah, all that stuff, her first appearance, all that stuff. I, yeah, I so, think she's an interesting character, actually. So, yeah, I, I I really enjoy that. And then you know, there's some books that like they they'll do like the Star Wars Revelation books, which are just kind of like a preview of what the year is going to be. But some of the some of the previews have some really good teams on them, and then some of the previews they're like, well, we just need something to fill the book. So you yeah. know, you're not getting the best. Uh, the Mace Windu book that's out right now, I feel like the art in that isn't you know spectacular and it's just it's just not car. it's not yeah so um well, again rob's, it really depends rob's got a yoda on the back of his closet do you still have that yoda rob <laughs> later <it>, rob <laughs> rob really quick yoda, yoda. Oh, oh, used to be in your old oh, videos man oh yeah 
show comics you must. Mm. <laughs> I remember that thing going off when you first started. Yeah. Where'd you get that, Rob? Walmart. <laughs> Walmart, long time ago? Or? No, actually, I got it. They came out at Walmart. When they first came out, they were like 150 bucks or something like that. Wow. And um, I was re-theming one of my old arcade games. It's a prize game, but it, I was re-theming it to Star Wars because it was going in a comic shop. Yeah. And I wanted to have Star Wars prizes and stuff in it. So we were re-theming it to Star huh. Wars. And I found these guys like on Amazon or something. They were only like 30 bucks. Wow. Very and cool. <laughs> so first one, we actually, uh, we mounted into the top of the game. And so, and, and where it was able to like tie him into the, uh, to the power in the game. Yeah. Um, Cause I went in and I soldered to the, like the battery section and stuff, you know, and ran wires to it and stuff. Uh, uh, the problem with that was that this guy is supposed to move around. He's got wheels and stuff on him. And if you, and he's got key phrases where if you talk to him, yeah, he'll do different things. Yeah. He pop, and, he would pop off randomly. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. I get, well, it, <laughs> if you tell him dark side, he goes crazy and he tries fighting him. But <laughs> oh. I said dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, man. I always so, love that. Yeah. I love that Yoda in your closet. Man. So I didn't mean to cut Will off. Will, were you were you okay. still showing uh, some? Yeah, I got I got two more new ones. Two more. So new I, ones? Can, okay. I could finish them off. Yeah, and uh, Rob, do you have more comics you'd like to show later? Sure. All right. Cool. All right. So here's a pretty cool cover. Um, this is Transformers number seven. Excellent. And uh, you see. You got a piece of sound wave. I don't know if anybody's familiar with, I mean, I'm sure somebody out there is familiar with Generation 1 Transformers. This is kind of what they've, so the story is not Generation 1 Transformers per se, like when Marvel had them. But what it is, is they kept the, those, they kept the characters, like personalities from that pretty much. Right, right. Um, and, you know, the, their looks are from that. You know, this is Hasbro, so Here, it, it's a license. Things. Good things about the um, new series, G.I. Uh, Joe Transformers. Right. So, yeah, it's part of the Energon verse. So Energon, Energon, yeah. Energon verse, right. So, there's Transformers. Right now, there's not a G.I. Joe um, proper book, but we have uh, Duke and you have Cobra Commander coming right. out of that. Which you they're, love. Yeah. And they're both limited series, they're both five issues. And then after those two are done, we'll get a G.I. Joe book coming out of that cool. um but yeah this is, this is it it's really cool as you see you got you got sound wave he's he's in pieces or something and then uh i'm gonna uh, assume this is ravage one of his cassettes you know that transformed into uh, a little like panther or dog oh, yeah. Or, I remember. Um, yeah whatever but yeah they're they're cassettes and you have starscream literally ripping the cassette tape for those of you who remember cassettes like ripping the you know, the tape out of him. So yeah. they're basically cannibalizing each other. Wow. Um, but it is a really cool, it's it's really brutal. Like the amount of times I've seen a robot lose limbs in this book is is pretty remarkable. Yes. Yeah. If I can get you we got guys saying yo Joe and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um here's a pretty actually gruesome scene. Um well, I hear that there's a huge battle scene of between the Decepticons in this issue or something. Yeah. So yeah, Starscream is literally getting punched in the gut and you know, Shockwave's arm is going into him. But that's that's like average for this book. Um I don't know if anybody, you know, how many people out there saw the the Transformers animated movie with Orson Welles as Unicron and all that. Yeah. But I remember growing up with Transformers and that was like one of my favorite cartoons. And literally in the first like five to 10 minutes of the film, like most of the Transformers you knew from that show are dead. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I vaguely <laughs> remember that. Yeah, that was a really uh, poignant. Uh, poignant uh, yeah, and for a kid, it was like... Yeah. It was traumatic. It was I remember traumatic. sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting there with my mom, and I'm just like staring at her. I'm like, Ma? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, is this really happening? Yeah, I'm like, what is happening? Yeah, so, oh, man, Hasbro had no, they had no chill back then. They were just like, we're, you know, we, we need a new line of toys. We're just going to yeah. kill everybody who's on screen. 
I mean, even with the GI Joes, right? What was it? Uh, was it Duke who had a snake go through his heart, and Cobra Commander was turning into a serpent during the whole film? It was yeah, like, and I remember when Destro showed up afterwards. Like he wasn't part of the, and that was the the main bad baddie for a while. So yeah, it was. Oh, man, I vaguely was... remember this stuff, being impressed with it, you know. <laughs> And then, uh, all right, we'll get on to the last one. So, you know, I will <laughs> take up the last. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad. No, I'm glad that you, you're you doing this. I love it. Yeah. But this is uh, Action Comics, uh, you know, 1064. Yep. And uh, this book is cool because what are you doing? Uh, I forget the name of, uh, and I just had it in my head, um, of Lobo's race. But we get a lot of... The other Science or whatever yeah yeah we get a lot of other people from that planet i guess um <laughs> a lot of other lobo-esque wow that's looking good characters in here yeah and this is going to start a, a line where uh this is called house of brainiac part one so oh there's a know, new it's... called tri trilogy or something yeah so this is going to be brainiac coming back to earth and you know, Superman's got to do his thing against Brainiac. Right. Um, here's a splash page. Beautiful. And yeah, this is Joshua Williamson on this. Book. Which I hear he's doing a good job on on Superman. He's doing a pretty yeah, pretty good job. Um, there's There's renewed interest in Superman now. Yes, um, Superman has become really big these days. Uh, here's some more due to his efforts and invasion of lobo looking guys but there is a uh, lobo is actually so you got the main man in the book too he he will show ah, up the main man right but yeah lobo is he's actually i believe in the superman book as well the the superman proper cool um i, but, I think i just i i read their first encounter like in the 90s um uh like a couple months ago <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool yeah, he's he's actually a really cool character. Um, you know, oh, I think one day one day they should at least attempt to bring him to the big screen. I think it could be a fun Yeah, people are specking on Lobo, I think. So Yeah, it could be a fun book. I'm trying to see if there's any more splash pages worth showing. I mean, there and the other thing about action comics is it's more of a super family book, right? It's a super yeah. fan book. Yeah. So there's more than just Superman in this book. You have Power Girl and Supergirl. And Superboy, Superman, <laughs> and then you got Superman. <laughs> Here's a uh, Superboy in there. So you, you got the the Supes family in this yeah. book, Action Comics. So really fun read. Cool. Um, if you, I personally was preferring the Superman book with right. Jamal uh, Campbell as the artist. Um, he's been on and off lately. Uh, he does a lot of covers still though. Then the action, the Superman action book. But kind of what they did was action was more of a like, almost like an anthology. So they separated it up, split it up, and there was like three to four stories in there. Yeah. And what they did recently is they just kind of made it one one complete book. No, awesome. no separating up. The oh, character. really? Action comics is now one story. It's pretty much one story. I don't I don't know if they have a backup one in this one. Um, yeah, they had it broken up into three or four different stories before. Yeah, so now I think at least for the foreseeable future, it's going to be one story. You don't get all the extra stuff. Yeah, people um, probably didn't take to that too much. <laughs> well, it's like yeah, you're, no, you're spending a lot of money and you're only getting a little bit of what you like, you know. Right, and then you got other backup stories for other characters that you may not like. Um, yeah. Honestly, I didn't hate anything coming out of there. It just felt sometimes like the main story was just cut short. Right, and right. I was like, oh man, I was I was really into that, you know, and and the other stories sometimes didn't grab you as well, you know. So it sometimes it's it's hard getting cut. Well, Damien's know. gonna try jump jumping into Superman in action comics now. So cool, Damien. Let us know what it's, you think, bro. Yeah, it's definitely a, a time to get on the Superman bandwagon, but or <laughs> you know, might be a little bit behind the time at this point. But it's been really good. It's been really really good. So I'm gonna switch over to uh, Rob now. Um, for those who don't know, Rob just did his uh, first, well, he made 300 videos, right? And we're <laughs> celebrating that Saturday. Heck yeah. Yep. Uh, giving away a box of comics on Saturday. Yeah. Um, but you need to look at today's video in order to enter. So. Yeah. 
Uh, cheap comic collector does claim sales that are awesome. I, I really enjoyed myself last week. Well, that's nice to hear. Maybe yeah. you'll drop by more often now. Yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> it's tough, man. It's tough. You know, you can see I know it's tough. It's tough. It's be everywhere. Yeah. It's Saturday. I've actually been thinking about, you know, possibly changing the day that I do it or at least the time. 22 um, says congrats. Bro. Mostly because whenever there's comic sales, they're always on Saturday. Yeah, you know, and I'm like, well, I'm stuck. I just found out about one today where there's one this coming Saturday. They're doing like four, four comics for a buck on a, on a sidewalk sale somewhere, and I'm like, I can't go. I got to do the show. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Dagger says congrats too on your 300 subs, man. You work really Thank hard you. too. You Thank drop you videos every day. You work really hard on that. So. Yeah. Well, I got nothing else to do, so. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> You and your house um, watching your mom. Who was it posted a comment? Their comment today on when they were posting the comment for the for the entry, they were like, "Oh, it was uh, the guy from Mars, Tempest from Mars." He he put, uh, you know, <laughs> "Don't you have a life?" You know, yeah. <laughs> because it was basically well, three hundred. You, 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 you know, you know, don't you, you have do anything to better do to do with your life? And I, I wrote back, "What and give up showbiz?" You know, but yeah. uh, well, anyway, you know, showbiz is. He's cool, man. You, you're actually enjoying yourself. Now. All right, Sherlock Holmes. Really cool. From Henson. <laughs> oh, and speaking of kids' book, I just saw the other day where Marvel's actually publishing an Uncle Scrooge one-shot in June. Hmm. Uh, Muppet Show number nine. Not sure how far they went. But uh, get a load of the mummies there. That's cool. <laughs> that is very cool, man. Claim, claim. <laughs> and here, well, the number's covered up by the sticker on this one. Eight, I think. Hey, Ranger Sly, thanks for swinging by. Love it. Ranger. There in the, he's there with the claims with us, man, when you're doing your claims. And so number seven, another <clears throat> Sherlock Holmes reference there. Cool. Number six, but yeah, these were definitely the reason I wanted this box bad enough. So, so you're keeping all those. Jason Aaron is and doing Uncle five. Oh, well, they'll go in the claim sale, but you know, it's one of those where it's like I'm, I'll be happy either way. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought this was a funny cover. I remember seeing this when they were actually publishing these, where the they wanted him to sign something, and they're like, "This job's too hard." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Legion of Superheroes 47. And like I said, they actually crammed 92 comics into this. Uh, so this is a what, whatnot deal, right? Whatnot. So they yep. just throw it into the box. And, yep. uh, and, you know, very few of these were bagged and boarded. That's why they were able to get so many in there. Usually there's around 60 to maybe 75 in a box. Yeah. But this one had 92. So definitely a record. <laughs> That's like 15 cents a comic or something. Batman Gotham After Midnight, number two. I'm slowly... I didn't have to pay up for this one, so it was like 32 cents a comic. Oh, okay. Right. Oh. <laughs> Huntress, number four. Somebody else wanted Here's those amounts. It's just as bad as I did. <laughs> well, tell us they were nine cents, Rob. Tell us they were nine cents, man. Word is getting out on this whatnots, the way they do things. <laughs> Pedro Pyroman, number four. Or superpowers number four, something like that. Project superpowers number four. Uh, Avengers fifteen, Mighty Avengers. Seen that one around a lot. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. This looks like a. This looks like one of uh, Easy's cards, but it's just a uh, secret Embrace invasion tank. checklist. Yeah, they did a good job uh, <laughs> promoting that event. I didn't like the event too much, but they, uh, Damien. Asks, will it be a dark, edgier Uncle Scrooge? New Avengers 42. <laughs> From what I read, it's a multiverse story where he has to basically stop his evil self. So, yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Not sure if I'll like it or not because it definitely doesn't sound like a traditional Uncle Scrooge story, but. Uh, Conan the Sumerian Zero issue from Dark Horse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mike just broke out all the, 
awesome Conan stuff, man. War is Here hell, is number dead. four. Excellent. Uh, another tour. This one's number three. Piggy would yell that right now. <laughs> War. 1985, number two, whatever that is. Looks like maybe some more project. No, this is on from Marvel. Never mind. Yeah, I don't know what that. Not I don't know what that is. Artwork is different. Uh, Ryan Thanagar, Holy War, number three. War of the Time Forgot, number three. Oh, cool. Uh, Trinity, number 20. So you're actually monitoring the screen while they're tossing it into the box, right? Yep. On the it's live just like this. They're just tossing them in a box. Still, Most of them tell you what it is. I was watching one guy the other day, didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. And you couldn't really see what he was showing. But, uh, the camera wasn't set up right. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Conan the Sumerian, number four. Z loves I mean, they're fun to watch even if you don't want to bid because it's just like you know and then you never know what it's going to go for either right conan uh brave and the bull number 18 with raven and supergirl I actually have that one randomly <laughs> right cool i love both characters so uh dc that brave and the bull number one decisions number oh, three one. again i don't know what what this is either huh i i think that brave and the bold issue that you just showed is the First Brave and the Bold series not to star uh Rob's Batman or Superman. Oh. Hmm. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Rob, someone wants to know if you're uh Dustin Rhodes. <laughs> the wrestler, maybe. <laughs> Jim uh okay. NFL seven. Uh, <laughs> Ultimate Origins number five. <laughs> hey Jim. <laughs> Ranger said time forgot. Um, was a cool mini series, amazing covers, DC characters from all eras on a dinosaur island. Yeah, you can't beat that. Uh, Busu Gold number 13. He's got you know something on his face right there. <laughs> yeah, uh, Justice Society number 19 from the Jeff Johns run. Cool cover, looks like maybe Alex Ross. Yeah. Uh, Secret Invasion Frontline number four. So there were some uh, Secret Invasions in there, I noticed. Avengers the Initiative number 16. Yeah, there was one or two. What up, Jim? Higgy Pop Booster Gold Series was very good. Higgy Pop Kick-Ass number four. Yeah, the Booster Gold funny Series, I haven't read any of it yet because I don't have enough issues to really get in on it, but uh, it looks like fun. It looks like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Trinity number four. Superman 677. Cool cover. Uh, Rain in Hell number two from DC, whatever that is. I've got that one, the whole series. What's it about? What's it about? They're fighting in hell. I mean, they're going against Sat <laughs> Satanists. Satanist, is that his name? Yeah. Trinity number five. Oh, that must be a connecting cover with number four, right? There you go. Since he's holding his hand. <laughs> yep. Little connection there. Nice. Uh, Hellboy number one of three. So Hellboy the Crooked Man, I guess. Ah. Uh, Thor Saga, Jack of Fables number 50, the last issue, I believe. Jack of Fables looks interesting. Uh, Is that 80s? Another Brightest Day. This one's number three, from, Green Arrow on it. From the 80s? The Jack of Fables there. I don't know. Fantastic Four, 583. Jonathan Hickman, I think. Yep, that's the end towards the end of his uh, amazing Fantastic Four run. 
and Steve uh, Epting. Uh, yep, Steve, it got better when Steve Epting started doing the art. Green Lantern Warriors Emerald. Green Lantern Emerald Warriors number two. Twenty-two. Oh, here we go. Combat Rainbow. featuring the Haunted Tank number one. Twenty-two Comics is uh, Crooked Man is a good spec book. Ba basis of the of the next Hellboy movie. Hmm. And Star Spangled War stories featuring Mademoiselle Marie. <laughs> Another brightest day, number eight. Nice hawk cover. Rob Spirit might, number five. Might, Rob, you might read all the Jeff Johns uh, Green Lantern someday, huh? Sinestro War into Blackest Night. Superman's Pale Jimmy Olsen number one. Is that during the 52 era where they were just. Uh, uh, no, this is more recent. This is okay. 2002, 2008, something like that. Was before that. 2008, so not too long ago. Well, yeah. <laughs> According to us, uh, Isis Rogue's oh, Revenge oh. number three. Uh, Stephen oh. King, The Stand, number two of five. Jacob says, uh, Hellboy, uh, Crooked Man is an incredible read. He recommends it. All right. Uh, Marvel Apes, Great. number three. Marvel Apes. I kind of remember that. Yeah. And another Secret Invasion, number seven. We got some Fable fans here. And then that's it, the whole box. I wow. remember reading some fables. Um, I think when they first started out, it was pretty cool. Yeah. It was a neat concept. Mike, then, you want to jump in there? Yeah, man. Let's go right. around Thank you, here. Rob. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. All right. So we got this is just gonna be some random indie books. So here we go. Okay. Here we go. It's gonna be horror heavy, man. All right, so we got Purple Claw Mysteries. Wow. These are reprints. Yeah. yeah. Wow. These are all reprints. And um, they're black and white. And they're not the best of quality, but hey. Oh, I love black and white. I'm not going yeah, to go back to and buy these anytime soon. I love looking at the details of just the black and white inks and stuff. Where am I at here? A reprint? Wow, look at that. <laughs> reprint. Let me just flip to another one. Well, I think some of them might be. I don't know. They just threw stuff in there. Someone was a fan of the uh, the Marvel Apes there, the swag. <laughs> cool. Here we go. Charlton Ghostly Tales number one thirty six. Wow. I, I see. see Ghostly Tales. I grab it now. Oh yeah, you got some cool mummies on there. Yeah. Very cool. All right. The Charlton. Then we, we're buried in terror. <laughs> uh, bad girl buried in terror. He's buried in terror, man. So there you go. There's a little bit of the inside art. Excellent. Yeah. Pierce Castle. What's buried? What's better than buried in terror? Buried in treasure. Yes. I <laughs> Absolutely. Cool cover, man. I have a friend who's a Frankenstein monster freak. <laughs> That's uh, an awesome cover. Okay, then we got uh, Gene Day's Black Zeppelin. So I wow. think the story with this one is uh, Gene Day's. Guy, awesome. Yeah, when he passed, his buddies got together, and I think they finished up uh, 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 an idea that he had. So very cool. It's also black and white. Wow, I love it. And it's got the '70s vibe to it. All right, I don't know what the this one is. Nazrat. I that I would pick that up if I saw it on the cheap. That's just what I do. That's yours. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Okay. That's yours. <laughs> oh, well, look at the back too, man. You have some fans. People love their horror, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right. So non-horror, we got Airboy. I collect Airboy. Eclipse, number, I see it, I get it. <laughs> number 13. Lucky number 13. Yeah, Damien loves his Gene uh, Day. That's awesome. 
Well, that's high praise. Little sleepy Yeah. Number eleven, your boy. Number eleven. Got some cool things going on in there. All right. Uh, okay, so this one from the 50s. Uh, let's see, what year? 1951. But you can still find this a lot of places. Uh, Major Interpack. This is like a like an oval team. Uh, went with that. I love that. Uh, yeah, so there's I love a weird space there. stories and stuff now. I want to grab yeah. it. So I got color interiors. Look at that. Let's see, because I think they they had a warehouse find of these. Really? Oh yeah, I mean, they, they, I bought it for five bucks. So, <laughs> heck yeah, man! Heck All right, yeah, so dude. Some uh, reprint EC horror, the Vault of Horror. Wow, Mike, you got a great collection, man. Yeah, um, I got all these before the the boom before, hit, man. So. Before the boom, yeah. The Vault of Horror number nine, well, reprint, of course. Right. So, uh, Space Age apparently was overprinted. Yeah, uh, I think so. Okay. That's okay. I mean, that means I'll get a copy soon. Hey, 1951. I'm there. Number eight. Ranger so loves the boy. Yeah, I do too, my friend. Baltimore. All right. Then we've got number five. Awesome. Spooky, spooky. And hey, we've got. Bob says, don't forget to drink your oval team. Don't forget. <laughs> don't forget your impact. <laughs> uh, this is number number 10. That Peter bragged. I want that. That's what Z is saying over here. Ugly family. I, I don't know. Hey, that's, a, that's, a, that's coming your way. That's the back of that one. Uh, the Nazareth. The Nazareth. Right. <laughs> Let me see. What else we got back here? Mystery pools here. What were they thinking? Go west in me. What were they thinking? Wow, so right. like, these are, um, they, they take old, uh, old uh, golden age stories. And they just add their own text to it, so they make them uh, funny. There, some of them are just plain dumb, but a lot of them you just chuckle at. Okay, tells too terrible, too terrible trilogy, number ten. Sorry about the glare. No, that's cool. Tells too terrible. All right, then we got a good old tales from the crypt reprint, number six. Yeah, we got our horror fans here. This is great. Yeah. Uh, we good? Or I got one more here sitting right Go ahead, here. Man. Uh, number you know, seven. End it. I don't, it's like we could keep going here, but my goodness. Yeah, no, I see the time now, brother. <laughs> there you go, man. Wow. Hey, you guys, if you're new on the chat, this was uh, chaotic comic book cover displays and more with friends. If these guys are my co-hosts. They show up all the time. We're going to we're going to simultaneous stream and we're going to have fun on Wednesdays from 4 to 6, 2 hours, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time. And I'm really thrilled with uh, what happened today, all the variety we got. Um, I love that Will jumped on a couple comics. He's my first YT friend, my first one, you know. And Mike and Rob are my bros. I'm so tight with them. And I just had a, a, a real, a really good time. Anything you guys want to say before we wrap it up? Take your time. Just uh, any information about your channels, uh, any changes, things like that. No, I'll be going over um, this uh, series that Higgy Pop sent me, the uh, Human Target. Oh, yeah, and, the uh, Target, yeah. Yep. So I was ready for a Human Tom Target King. story, but Tom I – yeah, oh yeah, Tom King, and I found myself wanting to know more about Booster Gold, about Guy Gardner, and I, I'm just like, so that I, after I started reading the first six, I said to myself, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I have with Justice League International. I was telling this to Rob last night. Oh yeah, I love. Up, man, and 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 falling into the 
I think it was the I think it was an annual you sent me where they had attacked by it was Justice League Antarctica. They were attacked by killer penguins or something. I thought that was great, man. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to digging into more of that. Awesome. Yeah, we're gonna be doing that. Um, Rob, do you have anything to say? I if you guys missed the first half of this show, just uh, Will got here a little late, which is okay, man. I just love that you're here, bro. And just uh, either sub me or Rob up, uh, cheap comic collector, or me. You'll get the uh, earlier show too. But uh, yeah, Rob, you, you, got, you got something on Saturday. One more time, man. Let us know what's going on Saturday. Uh, most Saturdays I do a two dollar claim sale. It's not an auction. Every book's two bucks, regardless of condition, whatever. It's just Free you know, shipping. if you it's two bucks. It includes shipping. Includes shipping. Um, Free shipping. And this Saturday, we're celebrating the 300th episode of my show. Um, so if you go check out today's video, uh, you'll be able to enter the giveaway for Saturday, which is an entire uh, medium rate box of full of comics. So yeah. plenty I can cram in there. Actually, it's going to be more than that, but you'll see the details Saturday. So. You got the idea from Whatnot. I guess Whatnot is a big sensation right now. People are just dropping comics in there and people are bidding. And it starts at a super low rate, right? So people are getting comments. Well, it depends on who you're you're watching. You, there's there's strategies to it because, <coughs> yeah, there's channels that are, have 200 people watching. It doesn't do you any good to go watch those. Those boxes are going to go high up. You want to find the ones that are, they have six people watching. <laughs> like, yes. And then there's nobody bidding against you. Seems and like sometimes they're in yeah. some really old comics. I spent last, I think it was Sunday, I was up. There was this girl. I tipped her 20 bucks on whatnot because she was up until 3 a.m. in the morning selling comic books. Wow. And wow. there was only like five, six people watching her. And she, I picked up seriously 10, 12 cent Silver Age DC for a buck wow. a book. See, wow. and, Red Art and Comics is saying, hey, you know, it's hard to sell on whatnot except for keys, but. What Rob is saying now is you can get comics on the super cheap on whatnot. You know, if you go you to the just right gotta one. you just gotta take your time and and know what you're bidding on and watch. Wait for the right moment, you know. Night Tiger, thanks for saying hi to us, brother. Yeah. We're going we're actually oh, leaving hi. now though. <laughs> so it's cool. Oh, he's been a whatnot seller for two years, so he knows what he's talking about. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I can I can I mean He's right, probably. If you want a decent, if you want to get a decent price for your books, you know, you're probably not going to get one unless you're selling keys and key issues and stuff, and have a bunch of people watching, yeah. you know. But from a buyer's perspective, we're not, you know, we're looking for cheap books, man, and they're there. Yeah, no question about it. All right, you guys, I love this show. It's a new show that we put together. It's only been out for a couple weeks now, and it's the, a great team, great interactions with uh, new comics and old comics. We're signing off now. We want to thank each and every one of you for uh, checking us out. So, um, All right, you guys. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one. Thank you, chat, and thanks, friends. We're out. Later. Later. Deuces, right? Right, Will? Yeah. Peace. Deuces. <laughs> uh huh. Right. We